Hey guys, Dr. Damon Lim, board certified laser dermatologist. Today we'll be talking about a very contentious issue, and that's vitamin D in um, skin. Now, vitamin D has had a huge, absolutely huge um, resurgence in the last decade, decade and a half. The reason being is that um, uh, we realized that over the past decade or two, in the context of um, sunscreens and sun protection, um, the amount of people who are vitamin D deficient are actually increased. So vitamin D levels, and this is actually true, your vitamin D levels correlate with the amount of um, sun exposure that you have. In other words, for patients who are very, I guess, compliant on, um, on sun protection, the vitamin D level is very low. So patients historically with conditions such as um, lupus or dermatomyositis or basically um, light sensitive conditions, polymorphous light eruption and, and various others, yeah? What happens is that these patients usually avoid the sun when you actually take the vitamin D level. Almost all of them are vitamin D deficient. Now, I've done the same on quite a few of my melasma patients. So with melasma, it's basically pigmentation, which is um, due to hormones, but it's also most importantly due to um, light exposure, yeah? And for those patients, absolute photoprotection gives you the best result. So the first thing that we do for melasma or chalasma is to actually say, let's use sunscreen, uh, let's use hats and let's stay up the sun. And if you see the melasma decreasing and their pigmentation improving, generally speaking when you do a blood test for the vitamin D, unless they're on supplementation, they'll be on the low side. Yeah. So we use that as a correlation in regards to compliance. Now the big debate as with vitamin D is this, yeah. So vitamin D is very important for for example in regards to bone growth, yeah. So vitamin D calcium makes your bones grow uh, stronger, healthier, and um, much better. Yeah, so vitamin D also helps with your metabolism. And in this context, things like ischemic heart disease um, is very important because vitamin D can actually modulate your risk factors for getting a heart attack or stroke. Additionally, vitamin D can also decrease certain forms of um, malignancy. So that's why this is a big debate on how much vitamin D we should have. So looking at the, I guess, the, the um, synthesis of vitamin D is this supplementation, so dietary intake of vitamin D only accounts for 10% of your vitamin D intake, yeah? So, but then you've got to use uh, foods or take foods which are high in fats because um, vitamin D, much like um, other vitamins, so vitamin A, D, E, K are fat soluble, yeah? Which means they're best absorbed with a fatty meal. So high vitamin D foods include liver, includes um, things like uh, cheese as well, yeah? So only 10% of your vitamin D intake comes from the diet. 90% comes from the skin. And it's usually the UVB which actually helps um, uh, form vitamin D in your skin. So that's 90%. So the debate is this. What do you tell patients in regards to vitamin D synthesis, yeah? So I can see the, the, the argument where they say, look, you know, your vitamin D deficient better get some sunlight, yeah? I can, I can understand that. Many experts have advocated the use of light, light in the uh, wavelength of UVB uh, to activate uh, uh, the whole process of generating vitamin D, for example, two to three times a week. So recommendations are this. Find your MED, which is your minimal erythema dose. Basically is how long it takes you to get burnt, yeah? Half that, and then basically, for example, if your burn time is 20 minutes, take 10 minutes worth of sunlight three times a week. Now, the flip side is this. When we actually advocate um, sunlight, we've got to actually use a high level of um, uh, UV, right? So which means, UVA uh, is constant throughout the day. UVB increases in the noon. Yeah? So basically, it's uh, midday sun increases the amount of UVB. So in order for this logic to work, most patients, well, most experts say, let's decrease the amount of um, UVA exposure by increasing the amount of UVB exposure. Yeah? So that logic it doesn't hold, for me, it just doesn't gel, yeah? Because you're asking the patient to go out three times a, a week for half the time of which they get sunburn and to get some UVB. Now, for patients who are, I guess, skin type three, four, five, six, where the risk factors for skin cancer is very, very low, that is a, I guess it is a safer, well, look, it's a safe option, yeah? And 
The flip side, however, is that if skin type 1 and skin type 2 patients with a uh, predilection to skin cancers, you're asking these patients to go out uh, three times a week to get some sunlight which may cause cancer and in the worst case kill them. Yeah? So to me that, the, the logic for that doesn't, just, this does not gel yeah? because um, in Australia two out of three Australians will have some form of skin cancer. It includes basal cell cancer, um, squamous cell cancer, sunspots etc. and um, melanomas which occur probably in 1 in 16 patients for lifetime risk. Now, when you're talking about skin cancers, that is a very high risk, yeah? So basically, you're asking patients to get some uh, sunlight to boost up their vitamin D levels, but also put them at risk for getting skin cancer. Does not make sense. The reason being is this, you know, when I look back and think of, um, I guess, even general practitioners giving uh, patients advice in regards to folic acid, iron supplementation, vitamin C supplementation, we have no problems at all saying, look, you know, um, your iron's down, um, let's take some iron supplementations, or look, your vitamin C maybe need to be boosted up, why don't you drink more orange juice and also take a vitamin C uh, supplement. So we are quick to actually advise patients to take vitamins. Why not the vitamin D? What's the big deal? I mean, it's, it's not a big deal, yeah? But at the end of the day, what you're doing is that you're decreasing your risk factors for skin cancer. So I'm on that side of the fence where I go, if you've got low vitamin D, pop a tablet, yeah? So anywhere between 1,000 to 3,000 international units, yeah? So for example, my wife has lupus, yeah? And um, as a result, her exposure to sunlight is extremely low because she's wearing hats, she's using sunscreen, and fair enough, her vitamin D levels for, even for an ethnic patient, it is actually very, very low. Um, and what, do, what does her endocrinologist tell her to do? What's a rheumatologist tell her to do? Pop a vitamin D tablet, yeah? Because uh, that's just the most sane thing to do. Guys, I hope you see the logic in what I'm saying. Um, I, I do, I'm not fence-sitting in regards to this. I have a firm belief that if your vitamin D levels are low, uh, don't risk it by getting burnt in the sun or increasing your rate of skin cancers because uh, popping a vitamin D tablet won't kill you, but getting a melanoma might. Guys, I hope you liked that video. It's just a, um, I guess it's me just explaining my side of things. Um, I'm sure your physician or dermatologist, they may actually sit on the other side of the fence. I'm just trying to show you some logic. Guys, hope you liked that. Please uh, comment below in regards to vitamin D. This is an interactive channel, yeah? So comments like that will be appreciated um, because I do respect everyone's viewpoint. Uh, guys, I'll see you next week. Bye for now.